guest speaker for today. Jill Dempsey is an entrepreneur and venture capitalist. So if you are, if you've ever heard of venture capital and you don't know what that is or investing, she's going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, she has 15 years of experience in growth stage multinational companies as an investor, executive, and board member. She's passionate about growing valuable companies. Her focus is on optimizing investments of human and financial capital for global, social, and economic ecosystem development and value creation. Jill has operated and invested in multiple sectors, including consumer products, services, transportation, property management, agriculture, food and beverage, and financial services. Currently, she is managing director of J12 Equity and chairwoman and CEO of VIEW, a wedding industry alternative finance platform. Previous roles include partner of Dolphin Capital, a leading boutique private equity fund, where she took active operating roles in portfolio companies and managed the fund's deal flow and exits. Additionally, she is a CFO of Blue Stripe, Europe's study abroad housing specialist across France, Spain, and Italy. We have a couple students here from Europe. Have you ever heard of Blue Stripe, Linda? No? Okay. <laughs> um, her advisory roles include board member of Uplift, an education technology platform based in Mexico, mentor for the Huddle Retreats for leading women CEOs of North America, and former Guadalupe school board member and adjunct professor at Brigham Young University and the Marriott School of Management. So please welcome Jill Dempsey. Okay, I guess I have to wear a microphone, but I talk kind of loud, so I think I'm gonna wear it like down here. You guys tell me if you can't hear me, but is that okay? Yes, okay. Um, I'm so excited to be here and talk with you guys. And I say talk with you guys because I don't want this to be like, I'm just standing up here like a boring um, professor or something. Because um, I know you guys don't have that with Russ. We go way back and we're trying to remember like, where was it that we met? And it's been a long time, but we can't, we're old now, I guess. So we can't figure out when it was. Yeah, we can't really figure it out. Okay, so. I know that that bio may, I'm, I'm kind of curious what you guys are thinking when he read that bio. Does it feel like I'm all over the place? Or like, what's your perspective? I kind of don't want to know. You're probably like, sorry, what? Um, I will give you guys, I thought I'd just stand up here and talk about some of my experiences and my view as an entrepreneur, get it? Okay, and that's French for view. Okay, so um, I started college and I thought I was gonna study French and I was gonna be like a French teacher, but you know what? I had this passion in me for entrepreneurship and I just didn't know that there was a degree of that and that I could actually study entrepreneurship and like get all those credits and study something that I was passionate about. So yeah, maybe I got an F in French 101 my first semester of college because I decided to take it at 8 a.m. and it was five days a week. So I still speak French and I studied that throughout college out of because it's a passion of mine, but um, I studied finance and entrepreneurship in college because that's where my passion is. And so let me sort of dive in, but I wanted to, let me see if I can figure out this computer here. Um, because, okay, I'm very much into music.
going for the course of the presentation if I could, but you guys might get annoyed with the continual song, okay? So you guys can download that song on Spotify and join the view. So this is really my perspective about life and um, enjoying the view and taking our time. So as you see here, I have this varied, uh, I call it kind of all over the place background and it continues to be, I do multiple things at once, maybe because I just can't focus, but um, I have done a number of things. So right now you can see sort of this top, this goes from, you know, what I'm focused on now, my tabs, sorry, the formatting messed up here, but right now I'm founder and CEO of View. And I'll talk about that in detail because I thought you guys might be interested. Is this too loud? I thought you guys might be interested in learning about that business. Um, and then I figured we can also go over, I'm just like basically moving this down. We could go over some of the other experiences that I've had in private equity, as we mentioned, like venture capital and private equity, maybe giving you guys some exposure to that. And that has really been such a great conduit for me to be able to be involved in multiple industries and sectors um, and different businesses in those industries and different stages of business. You guys might just hear about startups, but gosh, there's such a timeline of businesses and different stages, not only in timeline of development, but different challenges and areas of business. Meaning, yes, there's obviously startups. We hear a lot about that in PR, right? Sort of startups and fundraising capital for that. But then there's, there's a fundraising and growth capital, that's sort of that next stage. And then there's even late stage businesses, right? But then there's also these other things that I'll talk to you about that I've been exposed to and quite involved with, which are things that I call dumpster fires. Okay, that like somehow aren't really in the news a lot, but gosh, there are companies where maybe they're in a challenging situation where they need to really have a lot of focus because maybe teams have changed and they need to have a total restructure of team or maybe products have needed to shift or maybe there's a thing called a global pandemic, right? I didn't plan for global pandemic in any of my risk analyses. In college, like, I didn't have the whole, like, Spanish flu, bubonic plague, you know, analysis of, like, hey, maybe those kind of things of world history need to be on my radar potential for business planning now. But guess what? COVID happened and is still happening, right? So there's things like maybe dumpster fires that businesses and industries, and now we know macro ecosystems even have. So there's all of these really, I think, uh, interesting business approaches to get involved in. And it's about enjoying that process, even though they're challenging. And gosh, I'll tell you what, guys, the last three, I'm all three, 10, 15 years have been challenging. I, I, it hasn't been just really like sexy, exciting things. And the most interesting things for me have actually been the most challenging. And perhaps we talk about those. It, the, the ones that have been like maybe the biggest air quote success are the ones where I'm like, meh, okay. But the ones where I'm like, whoa, my brain worked on that one. And I feel like my life is better for it have been real challenge. So you see here, so I'm in view, I've got J12 equity, which we can talk about, which I'm working on doing investments, raising capital for companies that need that. And also being on the board of companies, we'll talk about blue stripe. I want to talk about rocket tail. This is the fourth one down. Um, so you guys probably, I love that I'm here at snow college because you guys I'm sure are involved in and have exposure to industries that are not just tech. Whereas I go to other universities and I just hear this like word of tech and that's everything and always. And I'm like, but there's other things, there's other things. As an example, rocket tail is in the trucking industry and it was aerodynamic wings for the back of semi trucks to improve, improve fuel efficiency. 
okay? And so I was COO and CFO of that, of that deal. So we innovated and patented uh, that technology and you'll see that on trucks throughout the country. Um, and that, that's exciting. So we'll, anyway, we'll talk about these things. And as we go into this, I wanna share a quote with you. So have any of you read The Alchemist? It's good, right? Yeah, those of you who've read it, I hope if not, add it to your, your list. So one of my favorite authors, and I recently found that there was this manuscript that he wrote, Paulo Colo, that the author of The Alchemist, that he wrote was found in Accra, Ghana. And I love this because I do a lot of, I love that it was found in Ghana because I have, I do a lot of uh, work in particularly like West Africa, I even, and we can talk a little bit about that. So this quote, gosh, it speaks to me. And it says this, rest a little, but as soon as you can, get up and carry on. Because ever since your goal found out that you were traveling toward it, it has been running to meet you. That, I will let you just simmer on that, okay? So let's, let's move to the VIEW business model. So VIEW is, I came across the wedding industry. Um, I was running another company that I stepped into. They were kind of in a, a challenging uh, situation, needed, I'll call it internal um, the support. So I stepped in to run it and that was in the wedding and event <coughs> industry. And so that was really my opportunity to do some due diligence, if you've heard that term, on the industry and see, okay, what's this industry about? What does it need? Where are their opportunities? Okay. So I ran that company for a few years and had a few hundred employees and operating events across the country. Immediately, I saw the need where I said, gosh, you see some of these numbers up here. Uh, so I'm a numbers nerd. So I saw some of these numbers. I said, whoa, this industry is massive. It's $51 billion just for weddings alone, okay? Which is 100 billion plus for those same venues and the other events that they do, okay? Massive industry. 2.2, as you see up here, 2.2 million weddings alone a year, okay? <coughs> this happens regardless of, of uh, economic, you know, sort of recession even, people get married, okay? And it's the biggest spend of single spend of life. And it's such so experiential and so emotional, right? It's not just a vehicle purchase where you say, gosh, I guess I have to buy this car. You're saying I get to do this. This is uh, really impactful to me. The average spend is $34,000 on a wedding. Maybe not something we're used to here in Utah, but that's the national average, okay? And there's also an 11 month pre-book period for weddings. So when the average couple that picks their venue, they're going to pick that and say, say it's right now, I'm going to, I'm going to pick a date 11 months from now for my wedding. So the financier in my mind was saying, okay, and there's 318,000 small businesses. That's what the acronym SMB is, small and medium businesses. Okay whoa, this is a super fragmented industry because this isn't an industry that has, oh, a consolidated big, you know, if you think of retail, like a Walmart up here and a Target and then medium size and then fragmented. No, this is an entirely fragmented industry, right? Mom and pop venue, mom and pop venue, mom and pop venue, 320,000 of them and millions of employees, right? And... 30,000 venues plus. And I also found this really important that it's majority women owned and operated. Okay, so I looked and said, gosh, I, I saw all these numbers and also the qualitative impact of this. And I said, gosh, as I had venues that were, uh, were working on putting on and booking events, this was the biggest friction point here for consumers and the businesses, because it's such a big purchase. Am I making sense? You guys kind of see the, see the challenge, but the opportunity. 
And so this industry of wedding events is what I call the old econ an old economy. And that's a technical term. And I really like that. And it's something that I think is very applicable to maybe some of the other industries that, that you might be involved in and look at, look at maybe doing some school projects on and such. One of the other industries I've been involved in is dairy. Okay, so we can talk about like Winder Farms. If you're familiar with that, owned Winder Farms. That's an old economy, right? Dairy, like, okay, um, as old as cows. So old economy, if you see the title up here, refers to industries that have not changed significantly despite advances in technology. Anybody have an idea of like other, maybe old economies? Because I want some of your involvement. I don't want to be the only talker. Anybody? I gave one, which is like dairy industry. It's probably like old economy. We were just talking about one. What was that? Mortuaries. Mortuaries. Right? <laughs> That's the irony there. Old economy. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Appreciate the involvement, right? Like, but there are these old economies that I saw the opportunity of the old economy of weddings and events being, whoa, this is massive, but it has a lot of need here, which I, which I see as opportunity, right? And so here's what I did with view. I said, what I see, get it, the view, okay? Here's what I see. It's fragmented, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of small businesses that need resources. We don't need to go through all this detail. But I said, okay, I'm going to form view. Let me see if I can click back here. Okay, this needs financial innovation because remember, it's the biggest single purchase of life at this point in time, up to this point for the consumers. So I said, I need to bring a solution to this industry and bring financial innovation to this old economy. Okay, so here's what view does. View is, See if I can click through here. So Vue is a hub for this industry, and we, what I do with Vue is I partner, we don't need to go through these details, maybe I'll come to it next, is I looked at clients, so these consumers wanting to book their wedding, okay? They're sitting down, they, they you know, grab a coffee and they say, okay, you know, to their, to their partner, who their, their fiance, and say, okay, we know our venue where we want to get booked, okay? That we want to book. Newly engaged, they want to book a venue. They haven't saved up the 30 to 50% initial payment required. There are no options at those venues to extend payments, okay? They're not gonna ask their parents because they're like adults now, okay? And they're like, this is our event. We're gonna do what we want. We're gonna pick like the photo booth. And you know, the girl's like, we're gonna pick the photo booth how I want it. And like, da -da -da, right, this is gonna be our thing. And personal bank loans take a while if you can even get them really unapproachable. Plus like, sorry, we need to build our credit, not like you wrote it, right? Um, and then the conversation starts where it's like, wah, wah. It doesn't have the vibe of that song we listened to. Instead, it's like, okay, so are we gonna wait to book? Or are we gonna like not do the venue we want? You guys get this, right? So that becomes a conversation, it's stressful. Similarly, on the business side, okay, venues, they have great leads. They have couples that want to book at their venue, but they can't afford that initial payment, okay? And because they haven't, they didn't know that they were gonna get engaged, right? And that life was going to come together like it has. And clients pay for everything because they're not going to their parents. The venue says, okay, I can't be as flexible on payment terms as that client wants. Wish I could be everything to everyone, but I can't. Also, this small business spends a lot of time managing payments, and that's stressful. They, the whole notion of like opening QuickBooks, they're like, eh, I want to like put together centerpieces and figure out balloon displays and like talk to florists. I don't want to do all that. So, plus COVID has been a major impact to this industry as you can only imagine. It was the top one to three most significantly impacted industries for COVID, um, okay? And they really just wanna focus on their events. So it's stressful for them too, 
you guys see where I was like, okay, let me bring a solution here. So what Vue does is we partner. So the, the main vision of Vue is to empower both consumers and small businesses with bringing innovative financing so that the entire experience is enriched. So we form partnerships with the small businesses so they can offer VIEW monthly payment plans to their clients. And those are extended term monthly payment plans so that that couple we just talked about now doesn't have to put down those large percentage, you know, 30 to 50% down. They just, it's just like their gym membership and their car payment. It's not debt and they're able to say, great, now it's, you know, a custom payment plan and now they can really focus on all that they want. So that's what we do with Vue. Um, and here, this gives you an example of some of our partners. They're like these beautiful venues and they're DJs and florists and wedding planners and all of these amazing entrepreneurs that need support like this to be able to book more events and give that enriched experience to their clients. So that's really what our focus is here to it really be that conduit for those enriched experiences. Okay. Um, and we have partners across the country and we're, you know, continually expanding that partnership and aiming to get to tens of thousands of, this is just an example, but um, really tens of thousands and being a leader, really platform leader for those uh, tens of thousands of small businesses, the industry. And then moving beyond just payment plans and bringing purchasing power to these small businesses. Okay? So, now you guys are pretty much the demographic of this. Some of you may be married, some may be getting married soon, some may, you know, whatever, right? And then I love the face of some of you, you're like, eh. okay. So I would love some feedback, some thoughts. Maybe some of you are even maybe wanting to be in the industry. You're like, oh my gosh, I'd love to be a, you know, take photos or something for weddings. Any thoughts? Because I don't want to be the only one to talk in here. Okay, this little pocket of ladies over here. You all look back. Yes, right there. I'm just going to pick on you. What would you think of support for consumers? Anybody? Anybody? Or here, you guys. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. Any thoughts? Did I make sense? Is it just like a consolidation? Like it's somewhere, like a website people can go and find the venue so they don't have to be searching forever, right? Yep, so we also have that. Right now, our focus is, great question. Did you hear that? Is it a consolidation, so are we a directory? Right now, our focus is we have a B2B partnership. So we say to our partner venues, hey, send all your clients to us because they already get their leads, right? And there's a lot of directories out there. And so we don't need to be a directory. We are a directory for them. Um, but the big value is they send their clients to us. And we have an auto accept for everyone. So everyone knows. They know that their clients will all be approved. And it's just a matter of unique how long the term will be and what that amount is based on what they're purchasing. Okay? So that's what we do. Okay? In view. Um, so I wanted to give you guys just a little perspective on the wedding and event industry because it's this one that there's a lot that may happen on the, uh, how do I put it, the directory side and, and all of these small businesses that are out there on social media, but there hasn't been anything to support the on from the foundation side really say, hey, how do we support these small businesses and support the consumers so that purchases can happen and experiences are optimized? So that's where we are. Yeah. So you said there hasn't been like something like this before. Have there been things since then that have like since you guys have 
There hasn't been anything like this. The only other uh, option has been personal loans that, right, whether it's a, yeah, so going to a bank and saying, can I get a loan? Or they wouldn't care if you use that for, you know, medical expenses, student loans, or to pay for your wedding or go on a cruise, right? That's been, the, that's really the only other option. And then, and then there are um, banks that will then say, hey, maybe do ads and say, apply for a wedding loan, but it's still a personal loan. They'll just kind of brand it that way to try to get new customers to their bank. And so, so now there's a lot of, I'll say, interest in people saying, oh, Jill's doing this? Yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, like it's a big, it's a big industry. They, they see it. So what I'm doing is really building view with exclusivity to protect from competition because that's why I become partners with my venues so that we say, hey, now you've got a really strong partner with view and I'm not just paying to go out there and find all of the consumers. They have the base of business. We're supporting their base of business. Yeah. Do you find though that, I mean, can you consolidate with it like between vendors? Do you find that Clients will go from to another vendor that can be consolidated that way? Yes. You led me to my next slide. So there's this massive ecosystem. And the hub of the wedding industry is the largest, the largest number in the initial purchase is venues that you see in the top. Okay. So that's why our focus is we sign up venues as our partner. Okay. Because couples first go to the venue. They don't decide on their florist first. They decide on their venue because you have to book that date first and it's the biggest purchase. So our structure with VIEW is that we also consolidate all their other purchases. So that this, whatever all their other purchases are, can become part of their membership. So they first get their venue in, then later on they will decide on their florist and that florist can become a partner with VIEW and they add on that amount, then they decide on their you know, DJ and their valet and bartender, et cetera, and then we can get this whole entire ecosystem into the view network to support that member, client, you know, couple, but also future couples, right? Okay, so does that mean I only have five minutes left? Oh, okay, yes. Okay. So um, how much risk is there, though? Because if you set up a payment, payment plan and you accept everybody. Yes. How does that right work? so there is there is risk and I love that question so that therein lies the business intellectual property and ideally value creation that I'm here to uh, establish is managing with those levers optimizing risk and value and saying okay I need to have this optimized algorithm decision making because now I understand I'm not just one venue deciding what my purchase payment terms are, right? But now I have this network and history. Now I can really optimize and decide what terms can be. And I can pull and do pull, uh, the business can pull um, credit reports because it's similar to like a landlord because it's a long-term uh, relationship, <laughs> kind of like a marriage. So... That's the that's my answer there is yes, there's risk, but it's really about optimizing and managing and determining that risk to say, okay, we're going to be a broad network here, support these small businesses and consumers. And the larger we are, the better we can manage that risk and price accordingly so that consumers and businesses grow and we all enjoy the view and have an optimized experience. Yeah. How do you, how does the view end up making its money? Because if you're not, if it's not a loan, are you charging interest on what they pay you, or is there out of time, like commission fee that they use that you get out of that, or is it something that, like, you, the business for being a partner with you, the business charges? Yeah. Great question. So, so it's not a loan, and we don't charge interest, but there, because we bring on clients as a member, there's benefit to that, and so that extended membership term comes slightly grossed up for the customer. So similar to a gym, you know, gym membership, right? There's, there's a, and that's where the risk management and optimization comes in where customers then are paying a little bit more, but they're getting, maybe it's a six month extended term 
and no lump sum payment. And they're saying, great, because I'm not having interest. This isn't on my credit. Actually, my credit is helped for this because VIEW can, can improve my credit by reporting this to the agencies, right? And, and so that's the answer is we make, we make, uh, we can make, and we have other sales channels too, but, but a primary one is that membership, um, we'll call it fee, right? Because you're able to be in view. And with that comes not just payment terms, but also other benefits that you get exposure to because you're part of the network. Okay. So I, I was planning on talking about other things. We'll see what, what time we have here. So, so views the focus for me right now um, because there's such need and opportunity in this industry of wedding events. As you saw, I have all this experience. I ran a $100 million private equity fund and we invested in a lot of companies. Some of these are on the, like the bottom logos. Like we had a dairy farm that uh, we formed the brine shrimp cooperative of the Great Salt Lake. Um, when I was teaching at BYU, one of the students in the class had been putting on a uh, Wasatch back relay and then we invested in that and formed Ragnar relay. If you're familiar, um, that was now probably 15 years ago. And we also acquired Manduka. Let me flip to that. Um, well, we won't get to that. So maybe we will. So Manduka. Da, da, da. Okay, Manduka, this one. So Manduka is a yoga brand that we acquired in 2012, 13. And so that's yoga mats, towels, um, and all the accessories. And then we launched apparel. And I moved, when we acquired that company, then I moved to LA to be the COO and CFO because we would step into companies and really operate those. Um, and that was a, such an amazing experience. And I guess what I'll share with that one is the important uh, lesson that I'll share is we, yeah, we were focused on expanding our product line and expanding and adding on new sales channels and growing internationally, etc. cetera. Um, there was a lot of money put in and yeah, the focus can go to, oh, what the venture capital owners and want and what the board is focused on. You know what my focus was? Yeah, I had to focus on all that, but it was the warehouse workers. <laughs> and it was that when I stepped in, the warehouse workers were out there. They were never talked to by the executive team because the executive team was always in like the comfy couches and like in the room that was all branded, right? And like going to lunch and going to dinner and like doing all that. The warehouse workers were making it happen. They were shipping our product. They were receiving our containers from Long Beach because we were in LA, right? They were receiving our containers from Long Beach opening up those doors, driving the, you know, the, getting all those pallets out, opening those up, loading them in, right, all of that. And it was this stark warehouse. And so one time, not that this was all on me, but that was an important focus was, and so one time what we did was on a Saturday as a surprise, like went in and plastered, because our logo was this red frog, put signs up in the warehouse so that it was all branded Manduka. So all of the aisles, it almost felt like you're in like a retail shop. It was like beautifully branded. Like I had the marketing team put together signs so that they weren't just driving the forklift in an unbranded, you know, area. And then there was like a, I think it was a 10 and a half foot wide frog slapped up on the main warehouse wall. And then we, I put up a chalkboard wall where we wrote like our Ma Ma Manduka mantra. And we started having weekly meetings with the whole team and talked about our focus. And that was really instrumental for company culture and bringing together product development team, warehouse team, all, you know, finance, actually getting out of the offices and, and really enjoying the view and saying, okay, well, we're doing monumental things. We're shipping product. We're doing hard things. We're, we're cutting through a lot here. And it's those things that I remember. I don't remember the detail of 
board meetings that, yeah, I was working until 1 a.m. in the office. And I got those board decks together, you guys. And then I presented when the board flew in and then flew out because I needed to do that. But what was really meaningful and really created value was those warehouse workers, right? Delivering product, the customer care team that was trained and answered calls and heard from customers that said, you know, heartfelt messages of how impactful the product was in their lives. And it's those types of experiences that really entrepreneurship enables. And that's where I aim to focus. Like view even isn't for me just a financial instrument. Yeah, I need to figure out how to really make money and manage risk, right? And create value. But wow, there's real value created because it's enabling weddings to happen. And the, the reviews that customers have sent in saying, you know, with tears in their eyes, saying we had the wedding of our dreams, that's real. And, and for that, I'm really grateful for the vehicle of entrepreneurship to enable that. Um, and how long do I have? Like, okay. So, okay. Don't listen to him. He's always late. <laughs> okay. But, um, all right. So then, uh, you know, here I have another example of, uh, this was, and this was a venture that I focused on this summer, which was a boat that needed to be built in, on the coast of Guinea in West Africa. Okay, I'll call it old economy, fishing, right? This now employs over 10 workers and has over 20 children that, that are the children of those workers that can now go to school, right? And they go out and they go on multi-day fishing trips. They made, if you can see there, they made those nets. They don't go to Walmart to buy those nets. They literally, and I was like on video, like seeing them like speaking in French. It was like this amazing experience to see their creation of their vehicle to go build value. And that is entrepreneurship right there. Um, and I didn't know that they were naming the boat J12 Equity, which is my firm. And like that brought tears to my eyes because it wasn't uh, because we're all in this together to really, uh, you know, feed ourselves and create value and that we're in this macro ecosystem and we need to work together in that. That's, that's where the most value comes. And um, another example I'll give is, is this, which is Kiana. So she's in the middle of both of these pictures and she's a fitness instructor. She lost her job. So the first picture um, is one year ago. She, she lost her job because of COVID. She'd been like a Steve Madden like uh, um, manager for like a number of years. I want to say six years and then lost her job because of COVID. She is so fit. Oh my gosh. And she was like, I'm going to, okay, I'm doing this. Like, I'm going to be a small business owner. I'm going to be a fitness instructor. And this was her first training. And she had how many seven people who showed up and they were her friends and they're like, we're going to be here to support you. And you're, we're going to help you out. You're going to help us out. Dang it. You're going to work out our abs. Okay. So that's her picture from day one. This was a few weeks ago and I'm now one of her clients. I started like four months ago. Um, and so this next picture was her one year anniversary of her business. And she had a whole party. I flew there because she was like, Jill, I need you here. And so I flew there for like the one day of like the workout in the morning and then a party at the end. And I was like, this is entrepreneurship because she needed it for her life and to support. She's a single mom with two kids. And she, look at the number of people and not all of her clients were able to go to that one event, but she has dozens of clients that she is building their lives and they are building hers. That's real. And her quote in this post, by far the happiest I've ever been, and I'm enjoying every moment of this journey. Okay. So with that, I will say, 
Ever since your goal found out that you were traveling toward it, it has been running to meet you. And I'm confident that that will happen.